for coming to Coping with Billing, Bullying and Developing Intervention Strategies. Yes? Is there an IRA here? IRA? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Do you need sign language? No? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Well, today I'm also going to be talking about um, some of the uh, challenges I had in my youth and connecting those experiences to negative feedback like bullying, criticism, and rejection sensitivity. So um, when I was a child, I felt like I was not able to speak out for myself when I had problems. And I, felt, I grew up with low self-esteem and I did not know how to speak for myself. But now that I'm an adult, I do know how to speak out for myself. And I feel like I'm, every day I'm advocating for the little me who, who couldn't before. And all the other children out there who are suffering in silence. Or, so um, I'm going to talk about how the, the various coping skills that I've developed um, over time. So some of you already know that some of the challenges that I grew up with was, um, was uh, being able to be vocal. And, um, and I, let's see. So some of the youth challenges in so socializing with other kids. Um, one, sto one incident in daycare in Arkansas. I was playing with a little, another little girl. And a third little girl wanted to come over and play with us. She said, can I play with you? We said no. <laughs> and she tattletailed on us. We got in trouble. <laughs> and so I learned from that point on that we need to share. Fast forward to third grade in California. In third grade, the same situation happened. But guess what? When I said yes to the third girl, the, the girl I was originally playing with, she says, I don't want to be your friend anymore. I was so devastated, and I didn't know how to deal with this feeling of rejection. Um, and growing up, I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be liked, and I wanted to be part of the popular crowd. But somehow, I realized that I didn't want to be like them. Because I felt like, in some ways, they were being fake. They were wearing masks. They would look down on other people who didn't feel, that, who didn't look pretty like them, who didn't know how to be cool like them. And so that's why I looked up to Martin Luther King Jr. I remember even writing an article saying to the unpopular kids, telling them, hey, your worth is no less than the popular kids. You are just as equal. And so um, other other issues I had when I was growing up was I would always befriend the new kids in school, but they would often leave me. And I would think, why did they leave? What's wrong with me? I made it mean something about me. Then throughout grade school, there were classmates who would pretend to be my friend. In elementary school, um, classmates would ask for a lunch ticket, but they would never pay me back. Um, in, then in junior high, one classmate, she taught me how to use a combination lock, uh, but they ended up going into my locker. They tossed my textbook, and, and they would steal from my backpack. In high school, they spread rumors about me. Some of the stuff I went over earlier today. Um, and so in college, then I also I had to deal with some, a lot of drama. 
when I thought that one of my closest friends, she didn't tell me that she had fallen in love with the boy that I was in love with. So it was very heart-wrenching and um, but, and then at home with the family, I always felt like my family were always upset with me, annoyed and frustrated. And I felt like I could never do anything right. So, um, and then I realized some of my triggers were always about feeling like I put so much effort into my work, but then to find out that my efforts were not appreciated. That happened during uh, post-college and jobs that I had. And then growing up, I felt like there were very few people I could talk to about these challenges. And so, when we talk about, when we're thinking about bullying and, and I, this was not something that we talked about when we were, I was younger. And so there is a growing awareness about mental health and bullying. And, I, and so it's always been kind of in, in me. I know that when I was growing up, I had a tendency to be able to encourage people, make other people feel good about themselves. In high school, I took peer counseling and psychology courses in high school. In college, I studied psych and social behavior with a minor in education. I would think about what parenting styles work best. And then I also took, I had therapy sessions postgraduate, but I felt like those sessions never worked. In um, the Chinese school San Marino PTA uh, a seminar, I led a, a seminar called Bridging the Generation Gap. I was trying to tell parents, hey, this is what I grew up with in the San Marino Unified School District. And these, there were things that I didn't feel like that I had. And I wanted parents to know, this is, this, these are the pressures that the young children are going through when they're in a very competitive um, school district. San Marino is known for their high API scores. And there's many, there are many Asian in the San Gabriel Valley. So, and then in November 2009, Mike Eng, a former assemblyman, he had an Asian American Mental Health Legislative Forum. And I was so happy to see that such an event even existed because nobody wants to talk about mental health. It's so stigmatized. You're not supposed to talk about your problems. Um, over time, while trying to figure out my career, I, I was um, thinking about studying positive psychology because positive psychology is about talking about what's, what makes you happy instead of thinking about what makes, what, what's wrong with you. I think the old way of the, the mental health system is always thinks about what's wrong with you. And, and we're changing to the recovery model system. Well, what's right with you? And so, um, um, and over, over a year ago, I was thinking about Amy Chua and how she wrote the book, Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother. I was inspired to write a book after that, as, as there were other people who were thinking about writing a book on what, the memoirs of a tiger cub. What did it feel like to have strict parents? My parents told me, I want nothing to do with your book. <laughs> Good thing my parents are not here. <laughs> well, that, and, and that goes with the stigma, though. Because I would make them look bad, right? To say, oh, they, they were like this to me. But I, over time, through my healing over this last year, I learned to embrace how my parents treated me because I know that what they did was out of love. They cared about me deeply and they only wanted the best for me. And so they grew up in a different culture. 
I, I used to volunteer for the Taiwanese American community. And why did I do that? Because I wanted to understand what did my parents go through in their life in order to understand how that impacts mine. And so I realized that my grandparents told my parents, don't be outspoken. Because if you are, you're gonna you may be you may be put in jail, you may be put uh, you may be killed. And this is in reference to uh, political outspokenness. My grandpa told my dad, don't get involved with politics. Because in Taiwan, there was a 228 massacre. Um, and I wanted to understand how what they grew up with affects me. And that's why I believe that that's why my parents don't like being so outspoken, me being that so outspoken. And so, because it, they're not used to being in the limelight. Their parents told that, my, par my grandparents told me, them don't, don't like get in the limelight. So anyways, um, and, I, and so I feel like mental health has always been kind of a, a theme in my life. Um, I realized that Mike Eng, he, he um, put forth an anti-bullying law, and, and so, and then after the jobs that I had in, in this, uh, over a year ago, I, I was processing the after effects of all the times I have ever felt belittled, um, through any negative feedback, through jobs, etc., through volunteer efforts. And so, um, I'm going to go through these slides kind of quickly because um, I want to share my story more so than making this presentation academic. So, what is bullying? On bullying, most of the time people think about, oh, it's just about children. But you know what? Adults do that too. It happens in school and the workplace and in and many other places. So I also believe that, well, well, why do kids bully? Well, they have to learn, they have to learn it somewhere. Did you want to say something? Yeah, I think bully, kids bully other kids because the other kids have something that they don't have. Mm. And they, so they're jealous, so they find a way to bully them and give and have what they do with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one reason why they, they do that. Yes? Uh, people bullying tend to have so less esteem as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And a really interesting thing that, why, well, that you bring up is healthy self-esteem. I believe that healthy self-esteem is when you only compare yourself to yourself. You don't compare yourself to anyone else. That's why I actually say I am my own competition. My goal is to be better today than I was yesterday. That way, I don't have that press, uh, pressure to be better than other people. Did you want to say something else? Yeah. I think kids get bullied because they got bullied when they were younger mm -hmm. and then they become bullied later on mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they got bullied when they were younger and now when they get older they want to become that person. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is learned behavior because um, even parents can in a way be bullies as well they don't, and they might not even realize it. right? So uh, even guilt tripping is a form of a psychological manipulation. Um, and, but it's like, it just depends on whether you want to buy into it. Do you let it hurt you? So. Um, I was watching a movie on it again. But like you said, this kid had speech impediment. He couldn't speak or write in school mm -hmm. and the kid. So one of the, the guy that uh, used to work for, for play, uh, 
for uh, the USC came over and tried to help this kid. And he said, if you kids bully you, it, they're trying to make you cry. He says, why don't you just laugh at them? Maybe they'll stop crying. Oh, that, that's, that, you know, bullying is, is, laugh, is something you know, said, very serious to, 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 uh, to take in consideration. Did you want to say yeah. something? Yeah. Can bullying you come from the stigma? Can you be bullied from the stigma? What do you mean you by that? You start bullying somebody because of some reason, you know, uh, some self, something that you don't have that you lack. And then you go to bullying, not understanding that you have a problem, mm -hmm. you know, that you're dealing with something, that's why you're doing it. Right. To feel some type of bar or something. Mm. Yes, thank you for sharing. Yes? What is bull? Bullying? Is another meaning or definition first heard. And, and nowadays, bullying mm -hmm. uh, is a, bullying is another, what was that? Is bullying is another, uh, knowledge, like that? Uh, uh, so, uh, Oh, well, it is. It can be detrimental. Yes. Did you want to say something? Um, I have that experience being bullied. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a child to be bullied. No. Yes. Correct. My case, I've been bullied by my cousins. Wow. No. But again, at a time of my desperation of being bullied myself, um, she had that moment stolen away my husband. Mm -hmm. And then, a conference and she kept telling me, oh, should, should you stop? I mean, should you stop uh, making friends then? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I'll get every every money to your life, out of your life. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what will I do then? Right, right. Well, I, I, I mean, I'm going to talk about, you know, how did I learn to deal with bullying and the negative criticisms and rejection that I dealt with while growing up. And so, um, so you come to the right, right place. Um, a bully, so what is a bully? A bully is someone who regularly is overbearing. Um, he or she looks to cause humiliation or discomfort to another, particularly if that other is weaker or smaller. So bully, bullying can take place in, uh, physically, emotionally, um, or mentally. Um, so, and, and it goes, and so, I think, how many of you ever felt like you were bullied? You can raise your hand. So a lot of you. A lot of you. So, um, so, let's see. So, like I said, types of bullying, verbal, social, and physical. Um, and I think it, everyone has the human need to belong and to be respected. They're according, there's, there's so much research based on this, and it's like one of the, the most important things that we need. Um, I created this slide because sometimes a lot of our, our culture, we don't know how to deal with criticism. There is constructive and there is destructive criticism. Destructive is actually meant to be like more like to tear you down, whereas constructive is like they, the way they tell you is, um, they're trying to offer you positive feedback to help you change so that you can be better, yeah. right? So that's when constructive criticism is very helpful. But sometimes when we receive that kind of criticism, we don't know how to process it. Sometimes it makes us feel vulnerable and weak. Some people don't listen. Yeah, but we, that's, that's where, well, we can't change them. You can lead the horse to the water, but you can't make him drink it, right? So only you can change yourself. You can't make anyone else change themselves, right? All you can do is be an inspiration. Be the change you want to see in the world. Like, um, the, like Michael, Michael Jackson, Man in the Mirror, and what um, Gandhi said. So, rejection sensitivity. So there are people who are um, sensitive re to rejection, and I know that I was one of them. So I think that 
one, so one researcher said, we learned that gaining acceptance is very important for re rejection sensitive people. Feeling rejected is more painful and threatening than it is to most people. So they try to try hard not to be in a state of rejection and when they are, they want to make amends and repair the relationship if they can. So um, it's, it can be very traumatic for people. And so um, I know that I was very traumatic for myself. So taking negative feedback personally, I know that I did this throughout my life. I, I know that my low self-esteem stayed low because um, I had very self-critical thoughts. And when, when you have criticism on top of your negative thoughts, your self like you're, you're, you're like beating yourself up inside, internally. I did that for too long. And when you get outside uh, criticism, it can, or, or, uh, or you perceive that you've been, you're being criticized. It, it can definitely cause us to have, just keep us in our low self-esteem mindset. And uh, and the cycle just keeps on going over and over, and it's like, like when will it stop? So, um, so. How about like people blaming you for things? Like I was blamed for my mother's death. It was you know my fault mm -hmm. being born. My dad said, "I wish you were never born." You know, oh, it, and that is very hard for people for kids to hear. He just said, I wish you were never born. Like, for parents to say that to their kids, oh my gosh, yeah, that would be very hurtful. Um, but sometimes people, when people become emotionally and they're angry, they don't know, they're too quick to respond. They're very reactive. And so anyways, um, th these are some of the intervention strategies that I have developed over this, uh, over time. And so these are some of the quotes that really helped me in my recovery. Eleanor Roosevelt said, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent. Do you believe it? Yes. And so, I believe, uh, and also Gandhi, he said something similar, and I'm going to change what he said, his quote here. You can chain me, you can torture me, but you will not break my spirit. And I feel like that means your mind is truly more powerful than you think. In this bottom middle one, it says, you can't control how some people will treat you or what they'll say about you, but you can control how you react to it. Yes. Most of the time in our society, we're very reactive and we let things hurt.